Hello and greetings from my kitchen. This will not be cooking with Lisa today, um, but I thought I'd pop on the camera as I'm gathering some things and thought I would turn this into maybe a little bit of a mini vlog video as I decided I'm actually gonna tag along with my husband today as he has an appointment in Denver and we live a few hours from Denver. We're in the middle of nowhere in the country. Um, I used to be a very big city girl and now I can only handle the city in very small doses. Um, but he has an appointment in Denver and so I thought I'd ride along with him and then um, run some errands and do a little bit of shopping in Denver as the kind of sewing related types of stores are much better there than they are out here. And Denver's really the only area that has good shops for apparel fabric and there's only a couple. Um, and so I thought maybe we could pop into some of those today. God willing, we have all the time <laughs> that I'm hoping we will. Um, and so yeah, I thought it'd be fun to take you all with me and we can explore the city together. I'm in the midst of getting ready right now and my husband should be back any minute now, ready to go. Um, I'll show you all what I'm wearing. This dress actually, I did not make. I want to find a pattern to recreate this. It's beautiful, it's got these little side slits. So it's like kind of feminine, classy, a little sexy. Um, I got this actually from my friend. She had a little boutique that she just recently shut down through Instagram um, as life just got in the way for her. And I was so sad because she used to sell the most beautiful, um, more like ethical, sustainable brands ranging from like Nine Lives Bazaar to, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the other brand names now. I bought quite a few things from her, but either way, she had beautiful pieces. And this was one of the last um, dresses that she had for sale. So. If you all know of a pattern that's like this, this has a assured bodice right here, let me know. But anyhow, so that's what's going on here. I'll be back on in a little bit as I thought I will take you all with me. Um, one of the projects I'm gonna do on the car ride in, hopefully this isn't gonna be too annoying because I think stuff's gonna be everywhere, but I thought I'd bring some of my patterns that I've been meaning to come out, cut, come out, cut out and cut them out in the drive, even though I don't know how much space I'm gonna have in the front seat of my husband's truck, but we're gonna to try to do that. Um, these two patterns I've had for probably a couple of years now, and I think I wanna finally make these. This kind of gives me like um, Zimmerman vibes, and I think this could be really pretty with the right floral. So I'm gonna be kind of loosely on the hunt today for maybe a print like something like this that would go well with this dress. And then I think this dress is really pretty. I don't think I've seen a lot of people making this, it's just a really pretty basic dress. I like both of these styles. And then the back detail, it's so pretty. So it's not like a traditional milkmaid dress, but it's nice and feminine with like a little extra flare in the back. And then um, I think I've shown you guys these patterns before on my channel, but, um, and then this pattern here, I actually thought I could use some ele elements for this uh, to recreate the dome dress maybe in the future. But I also have seen a Zimmerman dress like this where it's very similar, but it's got an extra tie around the waist. I'll insert a photo here. And so I wanna cut this out. Not that this is necessarily a summer dress, but I think it'd be cool to make another Zimmerman inspired dress. And then I just recently picked up this pattern as well. Um, it's Elise Taylor, I think is how you pronounce it. And I thought this was really interesting because we can see here, this little drawstring, and you can actually scrunch it up more and it'll actually show some of your midriff. Or if you wanna go, excuse me, go more modest, you can um, just leave it kind of as is. And then it's got the nice um, shirred uh, bodice in the back too. So it's a nice, just lightweight sundress, which is what I'm kind of going for this summer. So anyways, yeah, so I'll be trying to cut these out on the drive in and I'll be back on later, maybe once we actually get into Denver and get to some of the shops. So my first stop turned out to be Allen's Bridal, which was opened in 1960 and is now run by the third generation of women in the family. And it's located in Englewood, Colorado. And I've been here one other time quite a few years ago, back when I first didn't know the first thing about sewing. And so it was so incredible to be back here now. And I was able to have a much greater appreciation for the selection and quality of the fabric. I tried to get as much video footage as possible, but I just felt like every time I turned around, there was another aisle of fabric that I just wanted to really take the time to take in. It ranged from rayons, linen, there were some polyester blends, some vintage fabric, a huge section in the back just dedicated to bridal, which I didn't show in this video. But here we can just see just an endless supply of beautiful fabrics. 
I thought this was over here was stunning, even though I'd never have an occasion to wear anything like that too. And I'm glad I at least had somewhat of a vision of what I was kind of open to looking for. Otherwise, I feel like I could have impulsively purchased so much more. And here is a really beautiful section for curtain making. This fabric here, I almost purchased because I loved the embroidery and thought it would have actually made a beautiful dress, but I decided to have some willpower and just admire the beauty without purchasing. There were also a huge section of silk fabrics that were just stunning. I believe this was a rayon section with trim, um, but just so much to look at. And that peach fabric there is a beautiful vintage fabric that I almost purchased. And here we have some beautiful sheer fabrics. I just, I wish I actually had a pattern or something to make with this type of fabric. I've never used it before, but I was really tempted to purchase some just so that I would in fact have to pick up a pattern to make a beautiful garment with such amazing fabric. I loved all the different colors and styles and this one really caught my eye. I almost purchased it, but I ended up putting it back and I just love this lace here. It's just such an incredible space to go to and I can't recommend this shop enough. And the trim was what really got me. I couldn't get over how much beautiful trim was here. Very retro style, um, just so many different textures and colors. I definitely want to come back and spend more time in this section in the future once I actually have a plan of what I would use it for as I'm trying to purchase with intention. I'm trying. <laughs> It's a slow and steady journey, though. I have definitely have not arrived to that destination yet. But just look at this. How fun. I don't know how much of this is actually true vintage and how much is reproduction, but quite a bit of it does actually look like authentic vintage trim. Hello, it's back again. Um, this really hasn't been the vlog style that I'd hoped as the day just kind of got into the best of me. I did manage to cut out two patterns while I was in the truck. I think I drove my husband crazy because there were just big sheets of the tracing paper um, or the pattern pieces just everywhere <laughs> while he was driving, but um, he's a great man, a man of great patience. And um, I pretty much spent the afternoon at the Allen's Fabric Shop. It, uh, we got there around 1.45. He, my husband dropped me off to run his lead and he got done a little earlier than planned. And I actually didn't realize the shop closed at three. And so I just spent the entire hour just mesmerized by all the beautiful fabric. And I feel like I didn't even scratch the surface of all the amazing treasures in that shop. You could spend all day there and probably still miss a lot of beautiful things. So um, I managed to not spend my whole paycheck there, but I did spend quite a bit more than I thought I would. Um, their fabric is not the cheapest, I will say that, but the quality really is amazing there. And what's neat is that they don't market themselves as a vintage shop, but there were quite a few vintage fabric options there um, that were really still in pretty good condition. And yeah, I'd highly recommend the shop. I've been there one other time, I think it was three or four years ago, and um, and that was before I really even knew what I was doing with sewing. So I just got up maybe like one or two bits of fabric and didn't even know the difference between like, any type of cotton other than just cotton. Um, and so it's just lovely though, to be able to support a family owned business that's third generation. And um, unlike Europe, we really don't have a really great community here in a lot of states for garment making. It's a lot more of like quilting and things like that and crafting. So it's wonderful to find a store that I think really excels in the garment making area. Um, they had a huge bridal section that I didn't even get a chance to check out because I didn't really need to and I didn't have much time. But um, yeah, it was just a, a wonderful place to spend the afternoon and I wish I would have had more time, but it probably was just as well so that I cut myself off in my spending. Um, <laughs> I'll show you all the fabric when I get home, but I do have to say that I completely failed in my plans of just doing basics and solids and linens and things as um, the prints were just so beautiful and so unique and the quality was wonderful that I just, I got a little carried away. But 
yeah, I think I feel like everything was still well thought out and I know that this is fabric I'll definitely use. So I'll show you all that um, hopefully this evening when I get home and get settled. But um, my next stop is I do have to go to Hobby Lobby as I need to get some tracing paper or at least some good, I guess, crafting paper so that I can start working on that Doan inspired dress as I thought I probably should draft out my modifications for the pattern in the event that I want to remake it. I want to make sure I have some plans in place so I don't just eyeball it again. And so I'll pop by there. I don't know if I'll show any footage at Hobby Lobby. It's probably not exactly the most exciting place. Um, and then I think we're going to head home, have some dinner, and then I'll probably get started on my sewing project. Maybe I'll turn on the camera for a little bit of that. Um, I'm sure my cats will be plenty entertaining for that. But yeah, so this wasn't necessarily the vlog style I had hoped for it to be, but it was still a really lovely day and it's 4.45. Hopefully we can make it home before dark to lock up our chickens on time. And yeah, I hope you all are having a beautiful weekend and I'll be back on later. Hello. Okay, so we're now settled in for the evening. If you can hear a lot of noise in the background, that is my pellet stove. I'm down in my sewing space. I think I've showed you all this before, but this is how we heat our house. Um, and it's quite loud because I cranked it up when we got home because it was like um, 30 degrees or so and very, very cold. So I'm sorry for the background noise. Um, so I'm gonna try to zip through these fabrics pretty quickly as I don't wanna keep you all here all night. Um, as I mentioned before, I've completely gone back on what I just said a few few videos ago about I have this focus now, I have this vision. I still have most, the majority of my focus, my vision, but I did not stick to solids or just linen fabric at all. I totally lost my way. <laughs> um, and it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. And I'm going to work with this fabric because I fell in love with it. I thought it was beautiful. And I had so many ideas that I'm just not going to stick to my principles apparently. So I just, I've said this multiple times. I have to start making these big statements about like, I've got a new vision, I've got a new focus, and I'm gonna stick with it because we all know I can't stick to my word as I have multiple sides to me and I, I get just so deep into certain kicks that I think I'm over something else. And anyway, I sound like a broken record for anybody who's been here for a while. I'm sure you're like, I'm sick of this. I'm unfollowing her because she can't commit to a style, but. It's just the struggle is it's a struggle. But anyway, I still have a vision though, for the most part, even though these are a lot of florals and prints and things, um, I feel like they still make sense with a lot of the patterns I did purchase recently that I'm waiting just to arrive in the mail. So it's not like I've gone way off on left field for the most part, but anyway, okay, let's get into this, enough chatting. So I did label everything actually with my Kylie and the machine labels. Um, I bought these last fall at Fluid Plus Drape and I can't remember how much it was for this roll, maybe like $12 or so. And basically it's kind of like a masking tape and the labels, you can put the fiber, width, length, where you got it from, notes, and if it's pre-washed. I actually don't really pre-wash really any of my fabric as honestly, I hand wash all of my, um, my garments. That's just kind of what I prefer to do. Um, and I do that with any dresses that I purchase too. I never just like pop them in the wash unless it's like just like a, like a jersey type of fabric. Um, probably should pre-wash them, but I don't. So I got into the habit of not pre-washing them when I was really into um, vintage fabric as I've learned the hard way vintage fabric can bleed depending on the dye and the era. So anyhow, okay, let's jump into it. So this first one is a solid and this is a beautiful uh, voile fabric actually. It's a beautiful coral color, salmon-y cor coral color. This is a true vintage fabric. Um, and it's got such a beautiful drape. If you are in Colorado and you're looking for more of that true, almost like, you know, the gunny sacks, sheer dress, voile type of fabric, this is it. And they def definitely carry um, some other solids like this. Really beautiful fabric and hard to find this specific um, weight and weave of voile. So I was really excited to pick this up and coral is one of my favorite colors to wear. This next one I thought was really beautiful. Um, and this is a beautiful embroidered cotton. Um, and this is actually kind of border print. Um, the top half of the, the fabric is all just, well, it's way in here, but it's one solid color. And I thought this could be really beautiful as a dress or a skirt and maybe like a matching top of some sorts. But I just really loved this pattern. I thought this was um, just quite stunning. And they only had, I think about two yards left of this. Um, the fabric, it almost feels like a vintage 
uh, type of cotton based off of how thin it is. But um, so yeah, I only have about two and a half yards or so. So not much to work with here, but I thought this was really beautiful. And then this next one, this did stick with more of my original plan. It's just a solid rayon linen. Um, and this is, it's not a, a pure white, I would call it more of an ivory, but it's beautiful. I actually got five yards of this one just because I feel like you can do so much with this and um, possibly this is dyeable. I'm gonna do a little patch test to see if I could potentially dye it. And if so, maybe I'll go back and get some more of this as it has such a lovely drape, a wonderful weave, and the same price as the Joann's Rayon and Linen, Rayon Linen, much, much better quality. So this was a really exciting find. Um, they have a beautiful little linen section downstairs that I, I definitely be back to visit, um, but I got carried away with the prints, obviously, as we honestly know. So this next one, I love this print. Um, one of the best things I found, and I, I will try not to get too long winded, um, but with de-stashing my fabric and even just decluttering my wardrobe, and this is just maybe some help for you, is it really helped me to see the gaps in my wardrobe. I think I said this before, so I can't remember if I did in a couple of videos ago or not, but it helped me to see what colors am I really missing or maybe what styles do I have too much of? Like maybe I buy too much of one certain cut of a, a dress or a top and where, where are the gaps so that it can help me to strategize with what I make and what I buy. I, I did mention that, I believe. Um, but a couple of the colors I noticed that I don't have much of but I love to wear are um, yellow and green and actually coral. So I feel like I actually did pretty good with somewhat sticking to a palette that I know is a gap in my wardrobe. So I did at least kind of stay on point, even though I bought a lot of prints and said I was gonna to try to scale back from that. And I also didn't buy any ditzy florals, which is the prints that I was trying to kind of just not buy as much of because a lot of my prints, you can kind of see in there, there are quite a few ditzy florals. So I feel like overall, I still do pretty good. I was sticking kind of sort of to like my focus. Um, so this here, it's just such a happy print. It's such a beautiful, just true yellow. It's not too warm, it's not too cool, it's a true yellow. And look at this print, isn't this just so fun? I love these colors and I think this can make such a cute um, skirt and a cropped top. Not so cropped to where my whole stomach is hanging out, but something where it's just you just take a sliver of, the, of your belly. Um, but yeah, I think this could be really, really pretty and such a fun summer um, dress and it has such a beautiful drape um, I just thought this was perfect when I saw this. I thought, oh gosh, I have to get this. And they just got it in too. So um, I think this is just perfect. I see so many beautiful creations with um, these kind of border prints and things and a play on prints where you can pop in some of the embroidery into the bodice. And I've always wanted to make something like that. And yeah, and I'm sticking with a color that I love and I've been wanting more of. This next one I thought was just a really interesting print. Um, I think this is a rayon, like a viscose crepe, I believe is what this is. And I thought this was, I shouldn't have put all these stickers on first because now I'm gonna lose them and I'm refolding this back up. But um, I thought this was a really interesting color. It's like a, a blue with a hint of green in it. And I loved how it's got some embroidery in with the print and thought this was just a really pretty, interesting um, print style and I think this can make just a lovely lightweight summer sun, sundress. I only have two more to go. Um, this last one, so I've mentioned before, I don't really like really thick cotton because I feel like it just gets too hot in the summer and I feel like it's just a lot more work ma maintaining more structured garments. But I just thought this was a really pretty lemon print, a little bit different than some of the other ones we see online. I like all the colors where it's got the touch of like a turquoise kind of color in here. And this is a thicker, almost like a poplin color, but I thought this just reminds me of a dream trip that I've never taken, but I'd love to, to Italy, sitting on a terrace somewhere, drinking my coffee or something. I don't, I don't drink alcohol anymore, so otherwise I would say wine. Um, but yeah, I just thought this would be pretty and maybe like a circle skirt with um, some sort of like a, a cropped top. Obviously we're in a theme here. I do like, I like to make separates because then you can kind of mix and match your clothes. You can wear your skirt with a different blouse. Um, but I think it'll look really cute with like a, a circle skirt, a crop top, and then a white button down um, linen or cotton blouse just kind of tied up at the waist. Um, very, I don't know, maybe almost like Audrey Hepburn vibes or something. Um, 
I just thought this was really, really pretty and not something I normally do. I normally don't do a lot of fruit prints. I have, well, I'm not gonna bore you all now. I do have a um, Rifle Paper Company, kind of, I think it's like an orange or peach print that I bought years ago. And I've never made anything with it because I'm just like, I don't know if I wear fruit very often, but I think it's time. And I thought this was really pretty and fun. And I'll try to speed this up. Um, this next one I thought was really different as I don't do, oh, I'm really picky about pink. I don't know about you all that kind of struggle with your undertones. Um, I've never actually had my colors formally done. I've mentioned this before, I think around Christmas, but I, uh, I'm weird because I have a lot of warm undertones, but I also can have a lot of pink in my skin. So I can't go too cool and I can't go too warm with my colors, but I find that, um, with pink and like a, even like a purple, it has to be like a really light pastel cool tone and I can pull those off. Um, I mean, purple's kind of almost neutral because you have red and blue, right? So you have warm and cool, but um, is that right? Yeah, but anyway, I, I really love this cool pink color and I thought this was really pretty and it's a nice rayon fabric and I do really like, I prefer natural fiber. Rayon's kind of a gray area, right? Because it's from wood, rayon, viscose. Um, but I do like the drape of the rayon types of fabric with certain types of patterns. I have some patterns in my stash that I've never really been able to use because I didn't realize they needed something with more of a drape. And so I thought it's time to get some of the right fabric. So I thought this was really beautiful. So you can actually see the whole print. I think this might be upside down. Here we go. But yeah, it's not a print I normally have gone for, but I think this is a really pretty color and I just love this drape. It's very feminine and floaty and I that's one of the things I realized that I, so I am kind of sticking to my principles of trying to get things that have a better drape and making sure I'm not going back to buying just tons of quilting cotton um, so this can still align with some of the fabric or the patterns I'm picking out um, so yeah as you can see it's a huge theme of spring colors I like a lot of spring spring colors I like uh, spring and fall tones more warm tones um, oh actually I have one more bit of fabric that I ordered from um, Frankie Rose Fabrics and it just arrived last week. That's actually where I got that Lee's Taylor pattern that I showed you all earlier today. Um, so this color I was actually hoping was going to be a little bit more of a, a pinky plum color. The color is raspberry and it kind of turned out to be almost the exact same shade of plum of a dress that I made a while ago. Um, it was the paper cut patterns dress. The, I forgot what it's called now. The Stella dress? I don't know. I don't, I'll, I'll link it up here. I'll include a photo of it. I loved the color of the fabric and I always said I wanted to do something else with it. So it's not that I don't like the color. It's just, I don't know why. I thought it was going to have like a little bit more of a, a pinkish undertone to it. But very, very beautiful um, fabric. This is a linen, uh, soft washed, lightweight linen fabric in raspberry. And I got four yards, it's 100% European cotton, and they are a great site. Here's the tag, Frankie Rose Fabrics. Um, they carry all kinds of natural fibers on their website as well. So if that's something that you're looking for, um, they have some really beautiful linen shades and things. So, and um, pretty quick shipping. I think this arrived within just a few days of ordering, if I'm not mistaken. I think I ordered it the prior weekend and it just arrived last Friday. So, um, so it's still very beautiful and it might be more of a fall color now I thought again I thought I was gonna have more of a like a little bit of a pink to it but um, yeah so it's honestly more of a fall fabric also I forgot to show you two last things I did get two trims from Allen's there was so much trim there it was it was like heaven I'll one day when I show you my little sewing tour I'll I have a tin of all my vintage trim but I thought these were really pretty and um, I thought this could be really pretty with some kind of like ethereal dress, whether I use it for like a dress strap or like a bodice or something like that. Um, I do have a lot of gunny sex patterns that I do still intend to make as I feel like 70s can never got a style. So maybe these could be integrated into that. Um, and this here, um, this, is this called piping? I honestly always forget what this is called. So <laughs> forgive me for not knowing my terms correctly. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this or not. It's gonna focus in, but isn't that neat? I thought that was a really cool floral detail and I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. So I've been looking for something like this. And again, I, I can't remember if it's called piping or not. I want to recreate a dress by Christy Dawn. I think it's called the Adele dress. I'll insert a photo here. Um, 
I've been obsessed with this dress since it first came out. I think it's stunning and um, I think it was retailing for like 400 plus dollars and it was always selling out and I didn't have the money to buy it anyways. And so I've always thought it would be lovely to recreate something like that. And I have a couple of patterns um, that are vintage that I think I could pull together to recreate something like that. And I thought, oh, this could be, this could be the, the piping or whatever you want to call it. You guys can let me know what it's called. Um, that is part in, it's included in the dress. Um, the dress that I'm showing you here is yellow with the blue and white uh, striped piping, but I just think this could be really interesting with the right colors. So um, the trim was insane there though. I could have, I could have spent so much of my paycheck on the trim, but I did not. So anyhow, um, yeah, so I'd highly recommend going and checking out Allen's. It's a beautiful shop. Um, it was actually pretty busy also, so I couldn't get the good good footage that I'd hoped to, as there was actually a lot of the store I didn't even make it to, as I mentioned before. Um, but if you're ever in Denver, go check them out. They're lovely ladies. Um, it's just a, a delight to be there, and it's just beyond overwhelming, but they have a great selection of fabric. And um, it's not exactly the cheapest, but it is quality, and um, it's just a whole experience being in a place that has probably just so much history and love that's gone into it. So anyways, um, so yeah, that's, that's it. I have kept you all here long enough. This is probably going to be a terribly long vlog as we, we know I tend to talk quite a bit, but, um, yeah, I'm going to get started probably on my don't inspire dress maybe tomorrow as is, I think it's like nine o'clock now. I don't even know how late it is. And yeah, I think it's about all I have to share with you all. So I hope you've all have had a beautiful weekend. Um, and yeah, I will see you all very soon.